All right, the broadcast has started. Hello. Today is Saturday, Hello. May 10th. Hello. Hello, everybody. May 10th, yes. Hi, Jan. Hi, Jan. Hi, hi. How are you? Hello, everybody. So, Jim, just... Uh, we hi, have everyone. A about, you know. Hello. Okay. I already said this, but I'll announce it on broadcast that uh, I will be on Rob Gauthier's show on Wednesday night at night. The the Enlightenment Network uh, radio show. So what date would it be, would it be? Wednesday? Um, I'll tell it's you. It's the fourteenth, I think. Okay. Is that the fourteenth? Yes, May fourteenth. Uh, what time? Nine p.m. Nine p.m. Eastern Standard Time. New York time. Yes. Yes. Because he's in Kalamazoo, Michigan. We're on the same time. All right. Ni so Michigan time, New York time. So uh, ten p.m. in the evening. Yes, Wednesday, nine, May nine. May fourteenth. Yeah. So as far as I know, that's that's a go. Where where do you go? Which website? Um, I will find that out. I, it's um, all I know. It's the Entertainment Network, and yeah. do you know the name of the website? What's the Sabrina? keyword? I mean, what's the keyword, Sabrina? Um, oh, for where I'll I'll, I'll put the link right here. Okay, and, it's and uh, the channeler of Treb. So yes. If, is it on his website with the radio? Oh, station? there's a channel of Treb. So yes, yes. Treb channeling is the keyword, and then you'll find that channeler of Treb. Yes. Yeah, uh, he has he has a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. He's on Google Plus, and he has a website. Wow. Okay. Very good. Uh, can anyone introduce Treb? I, I I heard it. Uh, I heard about you know. I like the channelings, but I. Maybe a couple hours only into the channel, and he has tons and tons more. Yes, I kind he's of browse here like and there, and what he says is very much in line with what we hear. Yes. Through, through him. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I have. Very much in line. <clears throat> yeah, he, he, um, he pretty much agrees uh, with most things. The, I, I would say 95% of what he says um, agrees with uh, what Bashar says. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so, because I have um, listened to a lot of his his videos. So Treb is for the mention our reality, right? And a uh, reptilian hybrid. He's a reptilian, friendly reptilian. He's a reptilian, yeah, a very sweet, friendly reptilian. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, I have plenty of room. No, 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 you're fine. So now, uh, let's, uh, I will have a new, new. Uh, oh, I want to start a new pattern, new tradition. Before we, uh, before Jim goes to chat, how about we ask the questions, so we kind of set up our questions, so they... Whoever decides, fishing is deciding, uh, deciding who comes. Uh, they kind of know what's what the questions are. Uh, prepare your questions. I will play now. We have an option to play. So I'm inviting everybody to pre-record your questions and send it by email to me, so I can play them. So oh. I will uh, play the first one if I can. Oh, some people already sent it. You muted yourself, Max. Yeah, I can't really hear you guys. <laughs> they, they muted themselves, so. Yeah. They did that last <laughs> time, too. That's funny. Hold on. Oh, my gosh. You didn't hear YouTube thingy? I played YouTube thingy for you. Did you hear it? No, you had muted yourself, so we couldn't hear it. But yeah. I am playing something. Are you are you hearing that? No. 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 There is a YouTube icon on the left, and you can also use a, utilize a screen share. You still didn't hear it. I, I was playing right now. No. 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 Okay. 
So I'll have to practice that. That is, you know, I'm playing. It's supposed to play for everybody, but it doesn't. There's a screen share, like you mentioned. Screen share, yeah. Oh, um, whether uh, nah, it shouldn't be that. Okay, sorry for it's a technical thing. So you still can submit your questions, but I have to learn how to play them. <laughs> all right, I turn it off. Um, all right. All right, my question then. Um, I just started speaking to my uh, spirit guides through Jim, and and there is a lot of questions. I don't really understand how they operate. I understand some, but I don't understand much. For example, I ask them, how do you see me? Obvious question. What do you know about me? And they say, oh, your mind is a mess. <laughs> if you want to speak to us, yeah. you specifically, because there is so much mess in your mind, you have to speak linearly. I didn't say linearly, but that's what they mean. Speak word after word, not all the things together. And better speak it aloud, or if, if you can speak aloud, speak it quietly, but still it has to be a speech, and then I would hear it. So, And we agreed that the introduction would be to my guides or something like that, So some formal kind of start of the message. And then I have end of the message, which is typical goodbye or something like that. So that is nice thing. Then they say, we see you only when you look at the mirror. If you look at the mirror, we see you through your eyes. And that was a surprise for me. So they don't seem to be in control of, at least not in that way, in control of what's happening. Then I ask them if, uh, like, that day I had several things broken, like just broken unexpectedly, something that worked, 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 and then it kind of explodes or, you know, <laughs> like a light bulb or something. Nothing important, but you know, it was several things in a row. And I asked them if they did it, and what does it, what does the meaning? And I said, no, it's not what they did. And then I had you know asked them about other bigger events, and they said, no, the bad things just happen. It's not what there is no lessons for you. Uh, it's not the lessons which we are given to you. So for me, it was everything bad that happens is a lesson for me. And now I just realize there are curriculum lessons and unexpected lessons. And the ratio between that and that, they mentioned there was like a lesson before, and they didn't say which one. But the ratio between unexpected and curriculum lessons are lots of unexpected and very few curriculum. So the, all the trouble which I go through apparently is uh, according to them and others, is a creation of my negativity. So there's a question. So what, uh, you know, for the extraterrestrials, they know lots more. They can speak to spirit guides. So I, that's one of the questions. Uh, second one, we wanted to speak about uh, this group meditation and uh, the announcement about negative things with Earth crust, Volcanic activity, earthquakes, that sort of thing, uh, earth axis. So, um, I guess we want the update, and uh, and at some point after the meditation, after the channeling, we might do the the group meditation. And I invite your questions now. Well, I would like to know how close we are to World War Three between North Korea um, insulting America, taking a prisoner. Over what's happening in the Ukraine, and yeah, that would be one of my questions. How close we are to World War Three, and yeah, and their relationship between the um, between God, the angels, and themselves when things are coordinated, like uh, um, like they're coordinating, helping with the radiation and Yellowstone and things like that. And what's their relationship directly with the angels and God? Are they God gives them directions, or for the earth, or are they just doing it separately on their own? And the angels are working on their own. That would be my second question. And my third is Takia promised me to tell me about my son's application this week. So if she comes through, I'll probably ask her back. Thank you. All right. Anybody else with the questions? Yeah, I just got the orb from. Takar. Oh. Oh. So, so I'm wondering why I was chosen for that. Because uh -huh. I didn't apply, but it's wonderful sometimes. How yeah. does it feel? Where do you feel it? Yeah, in, in my whole body. I, I was meditating the night to 
Monday, and then it's just came in like it's exploded from a whole body. Wow. And sometimes now when I meditate, I can very easily go to in very calm, and I'm like very neutral, very everything is okay. And that feels very nice. But sometimes I can't. But usually when I go to bed. So I have had t- trouble sleeping this week. Uh, okay. Do you feel like you have a lot of energy that's like surging through you now? Yes. Yeah. Very calm. And yeah. Everything is calm. It's loving energy. That's good, man. Today I don't feel it so much. But it should slowly go more of that but a lot of things have happened this week so yeah that's awesome it is Max, I it's want one too. you brought up the question of uh, well I actually got introduced to my spirit guide this past week with this channeling session with Jim and uh, uh, her name is Candice and she I uh, don't know if you're permitted to announce it on, on online public you have to ask permission from her Oh really? Okay. We already know that's okay. Next time, we be careful to not to publicize things which are not supposed. To. Okay. Um, but she she meant she brought up a, a very strong point similar to what you're speaking to about when you. I know personally as well. I I have a lot of I'm thinking a lot and I have a very intense, um, dense thoughts so to speak. Meaning there's a lot of very co- strong concentration going into thoughts, but it allows. It, it, it hinders our spirit guides for people who, who think a lot very intensely. It hinders our spirit guides to kind of see through the layers to kind of help us and see. Right. You go into answers. Uh, let's do questions first, and then after the, the channel, and we'll do the answers. Okay, okay. Go right. <laughs> you with the questions. Okay. Uh, my, My question would be, what is the most pivotal thing we as a species have incorrect about our history? Oh. Can you say again? It? It's... What's the most pivotal thing in our history that we have wrong? Oh, in the past? Yeah. Interesting. Yes. Okay. Any more questions? I would like to ask about a dream I had a couple nights ago. Um, a Yael came in my house and he was telling me this information and he said contact will be made on the 14th, so I'm kind of confused about that because I don't really know what he means by that, so yeah, that's one of my questions. Okay. It's very quiet. Did you hear it? Can you repeat it? Yes, she said a Yael visited her and her, was your, were you asleep? In a dream, in a dream. In a and dream. said that she'd be contacted on the 14th. Oh. Is that what you said? Yeah, contact will be made on the 14th. Oh, the official contact, open. Contact would be made on the 14th. I think he was talking to you personally. I'm not. I'm not sure. Like, um, okay. it kind of confused me. Let's see. I think uh, it's um, more likely personal than open. I, I, we would celebrate. Yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> um, because they said to us so far that 2015 would be the. Yeah, so far they were. So that's what I'm making my assumption on, but we'll have to ask them about it. All right, any more questions? Yeah, I have a question from Renee about. um, He was asking about. um, I I suppose it's the reptilian in the middle of my drawings. Uh huh. Um, He would like to find out more information because it seems familiar uh, to him. That he saw it in his sleep, so he would like to know about more about that. The the one on the top middle, or the yeah, middle? Right. middle middle the middle. Okay. The, the one the one in the middle. Middle row and middle. That, yeah. Um, okay. My and for my part, my questions. It's still about the languages. Yes. Um, I wish I know they're preparing us for something um, but I feel like maybe a little more guidance okay. without I know they can't tell us everything but maybe if they could give us a little more guidance on on this um because I'm speaking another one. 
Mm-hmm. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and it's actually a, a it sounds, you, you know, Max, the uh, video you have posted, it sounds a bit, um, with the girl talking the language, it sounds a little bit more like that. Um, um, what do you mean? A, a, a little bit more insectoid. Oh, she used, um, she used uh, the word, we, yeah. which is exactly, we love you in... Uh, Arcturian. So and yes. and you know, compare it to what uh, Zacharias speaks. I think it was Arcturian. You know. Oh, okay. The word was very recognizable. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I would like to know about um, that particular entity that that had come to me that I was saying that I can't speak when it comes in. Yes, the one when you're driving. Yeah, and and it came in two other times. Yes, that yeah. I remember you speaking about that. Yeah. More questions? Yeah, I have a question. A, all right, all right, let's do this. Uh, okay. Because how do you know if they're going to be answering the right questions? Yes, that's right. That's yeah. right. Uh, please mute your microphones. And then we start in the session. There was a question from someone who ha doesn't have a microphone. Okay. That's from Jasmina, and she was just, just asking, she says, I have a question, what does my dreams about the corner in the sky mean? The corner in the sky? The corner in the sky? Yeah, she can't speak, so I, I can't really um, explain C much more. C-O-R-N-E-R, -E corner. Uh, she's in the chat. She's talking in the chat on the side, so I don't know if you can access that and see. All right, let's leave with mysterious question. All right. Corner in the sky. Now, somebody it's has... like a new world, she's saying. Hmm? A new corner. I'm not sure. All right, uh, Major, you have the feedback. Try to you know, either put headphones or put a microphone away from your uh, speakerphone. All right, now we, we are ready. So we invite uh, our usual uh, guests and, and more. I am Buddha. Hello, Buddha. Welcome. I have come here for a very short visit because I wanted to explain something about the chakras before I go any farther in my teachings of them. 
we have already talked about the root chakra and the sacral, as you call it. And I wanted to let you know something general about the chakras. The chakras are many layered. Are you understanding that this is true? There is not just one chakra layer of each color, shall we say. There is multiple layers, and I'll tell you why. You bring with you into this life shadows of your former chakras. Does this make sense to yes, you? Yes, yes, shadows. Shadows of your former chakras, and when you lighten each chakra, you lighten that pathway to regress into that chakra and into that lifetime where you and what you felt and when people do certain codes and things on your body it pulls out things from your past lives from your chakras do you understand this because it is important for me to teach this now so that you can understand that when you are meditating you may go deeper into yourself than just one human chakra. You have many shadows behind this one that light up and can give you information and guidance as well whenever you bring these into proper attunement, when you bring these into proper energy form. Does this make sense to you? I hope it does. Yes. And I just wanted you to know, these past shadows hold secrets to the future because they're not in any awkward sequence. They're in a perfect pattern to bring you forward, especially those of you with in, that have enlightenment or are seeking enlightenment. These will pull you forward. forward. They are like a path to the future. Do you understand? Yes. So when you go back and travel the chakras and you get to the one that is here, then you are able to understand how to move to the next life and the next chakra. But it can happen now as well because your awareness of the past brings things into fullness within you so that you may open up things that you are not aware of. And this is a secret to your third eye, your understanding of who you are and what you shall be in this life and where to move in your next. Now, you would think that your chakras came to you at random, but this is not so. There is a pattern, there is a guidance from the spirits in all that you do, in all that you feel within you. So, I remember that you were just speaking about some of your random lessons. Yes, there are random lessons, but you know, those random lessons are part of your world, and you must learn about your world and how it operates, and the, the troubles that are there. But then there are the profound lessons. Yes. These are all part of your chakral system as well. Mm -hmm. When you relate to, when you learn something in this lifetime that is of value, it definitely becomes part of your chakral system. Whatever chakra it affects, and it could be more than one, will be encoded in there for your next life. So that you will know if you did not pass that particular test, you will have an idea of how to be more successful in the next. I will leave you now because that is enough information for you to think about at the moment. Thank you very much. Much appreciation. That was lovely. Thank you very much. You see.
Uha. Uha. Greetings, Dakar. Thank you. One moment. Ah, welcome. Hello, Good. Take care. Greetings, Take care. Hi, Take care. Greetings, Take care. Greetings to all. Greetings, Take care. Greetings, Take care. Greetings, Take care. I am honored. There are many questions. The way that this was presented is a little confusing. For the questions to be answered, there's many channels and directions to go, and I am not sure which connections are with which people. I would start with the most important one about seismic instability of Earth. Yes, that was Safira. Yes, thank you. Probably not only mine, but one of them. Yes. Were you you were commenting about World War Three? Yes, to care. Yes, thank you. I was not. One moment. The situation is dire in many ways on your planet and therefore you have received much help in the last several months. There are many things to worry about as, as your people would say but things are as they should be at this time. There is threats of war. There is threats of world problems, but I would more be aware of the earth itself. We need to help the earth because she is in pain. When she is in pain, she cannot use all of her abilities to help mankind. There was a time when mankind could call on Mother Earth and she was fresh and new and could give energy unlike what she can do at this time. But there is a threat of war. We cannot tell you how that outcome will happen. There are too many relativities in this area to pronounce the full truth, but there will be problems. However, my concern right now is the seismic, volcanic, and Earth-related problems because Mother Earth is your home. Is there anything we can do? Yes. There should be on the hour, prayers going to Mother Earth. Because she needs healing right now. So there are many time zones represented here. Bring Mother Earth a gift when you think of it. Reach out, feel the energy coming down from Father Sky. Let it collect in your hands and then give it to her as a gift and have her recycle this energy into her health. Feel it moving out in all directions. Feel it moving out from your hands in all directions and tell her to use this for healing. Do you understand? Yes. Because now she needs energy more than ever. Can you give us a specific example by yourself doing the prayer right now uh, using yes. Jim's hands? Yes. You hold them out and you say, 
you feel the energy first. And you thank Father Sky for giving you this energy in your hands. Those of you that can feel it and those of you who cannot, it is gathering because you have thanked Father Sky for it. There are chakras in the middle of the hand. You should be able to feel this energy coming into them. And then, prayerfully, give it to Mother Earth. Move it down and say, take this energy, recycle it for your health. I feel it moving out in all directions for healing's purpose. Does that make it more aware for you? It does. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I just discovered it for myself that I can do Reiki on Earth, and that's exactly yes, that. that is what it is. It is actual Reiki on Earth. The Earth needs your energy coming from the sky, coming from your hands. Just let it flow. It will not hurt you. And what about for Japan? Can you can we do anything for them? There are those from Japan that listen to this channelings and they will do as the same as I said. Okay, thank you. Is it good to do that in nature? Yes, it is good to do it anywhere you are because that energy is intentioned for Mother Earth and it will reach her. Uh, I, as usual, I have a slightly negative question on the same topic. Yes. I wish this negativity to be used for positive purpose. Yes. So Roxy channeled a council of human higher collective energy, yes. Arcturian collective energy, and few other collective energies. And there the Earth Collective suggested to have a middle size disaster inviting it to Earth, I guess, they wanted an experience or cleaning purpose of that. How does it fit? So, Greg Fitnier tries to keep everything out of disasters, and then the human collective invites the disaster. What's no, the there is not, that is not so. What is so is that this will lessen the disaster. There will still be a lesson to learn, <coughs> but you do not want the disaster to be of a, such a size that it will destroy much. So we are calming the outcome of the disaster. Do you understand? It will still happen. There will still things happen. But this will help calm Mother Earth and help calm those things that are to come. The lessons will be learned, but lessons are for the living. If they are dead, they cannot learn the lesson. Yes. Are you in communication? What is the structure of your communication with human collective? Is it pretty good communication? Yes. Are you talking through Arcturians or talking directly? We do both. There are times when both are necessary. So you are aware of desire of human collective to bring a smaller disaster? A smaller disaster which they already know will come. They are already aware, they just want to actually verbalize that it is. Okay, because I was trying to block the light. Please continue. Your Caitlin, your dream, about the 14th of May. Yes. Is that Caitlin that I'm speaking to? Uh, Caitlin stepped out, but you can answer. She will hear the recording. I did not feel her presence. That's why I uh -huh. asked. Perhaps I will go to someone else. Oh, fine. Someone asked about the dream about the corner of the sky. Yes, it's... Yes. Jasmina. This... Jasmina. This is the corner of the sky that she is from. That is why she dreams about it. What does it mean, corner of the sky? 
When you look at the sky, it is all around you. But when she finds a corner, this point at the corner where she sees the dream is where she is from. Is it close to Horizon? It's not for her. She said, she said it was very much different from our world. The colors were different and we were not human anymore. Yes. It was also a bit scary later and much more real than this life. Yes. This is, this is where she is originally from. She has gone back in teleporting herself to this area of the corner of the sky and where the corner is is where she is from. Okay. Um, she also said that um, she helped with the breaking down of the matrix. The world was very much more uh, real. Wait, somebody move this. Um, she has passed through several densities. And she can see that there is changes that have happened to the Earth in over many millennium. This is what I believe she is speaking of. Okay, and and can you say from what world she is, or I will not be able to say at this time because that world is not permitting me to say. Okay. Thank you. Um, to care? Yes. Uh, to care? Um, last week you told me you would check on my son's application yes. that he submitted in October. Is there any more news on that? I promised him I would ask. There is no need for any more communication about that. He has found a place. Oh, what do you mean, please? His application. Yes. For the right thing has been accepted. Oh, it has been. So, Shh, he's been having right. more... Go ahead, please. Continue. I'm sorry, to can't. Go ahead. No, continue. Oh, I just didn't understand. So his application has been accepted, and he's been having more dreams lately. But there's no, there's no purpose to them. They're just random dreams. I don't know. Are they scanning him now, or will they interview him soon? Or they will be observing him, and that is the cause of his dreams. I see. Okay. They are both. <laughs> that are around him and they cause him to dream and this is fine they are observing these dreams at one level although they are at many con conscious and subconscious levels but they are finding what they need to know okay and th th there's no saying how long it'll take between this moment and an interview is that correct there is no time period except when they know for sure that they can accept mm. them as a traveler. Okay. Thank you. And I have a, one more question about the relationship <clears throat> between our ET um, galactic friends like your uh, Gurkhfritnia and the other alliances and your relationship to the angels and to Godfather, Godmother, uh, is is it all coordinated? Does God direct also what you guys are doing on the earth? Excuse me for saying you guys, your federation is doing on the earth, and are you getting directions from God or from the? Do you work together with the angels to coordinate? How does that work? Is everybody working separately to help the earth? No, there is alliances between those in the flesh and their prayers between those of the dead or spirit or the living spirits. I do not need to use the word dead. 
because there is no such thing really as death. Mm, right. But so, they do work together. Let me continue. Yes. They work together and are becoming much more uniform in the way they move. More communication is being utilized at this time between Grukvignir and all those other alliances that are here. All the other species that are around the earth as well that are just observing or are actively involved. Now, in accordance with that, prayer is a very important part and seeking out those entities that are more knowledgeable than those in the flesh. So we do call upon them to help us. We do call upon their wisdom and knowledge to help us with things that we cannot even comprehend about your planet because you are so diverse. It makes it difficult for us to foresee some of your movements. So we are asked, we asked to be helped with these kinds of scenarios. Does this answer your question? To, to some degree. But first, to Kier, I would like to thank you for answering my question about my son and keeping your word and getting that information. I forgot yeah. to thank you enough for it. So thank you. Um, so so God is the ultimate or orchestrator of everything going on on the earth, including orchestrating and working with you? Yes. When you move backwards from third dimension to the ultimate heights of God, yes, there is an, a lineage and a line and a power and a message and a plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, Takir. I love I, you, Takir. Thank you. The, <laughs> thank you. The, the negative spiritual forces, are they officially acting on the will of God to bring us disasters, disease, and things like that? Their perception of what should be and their God that they speak to are not of the first creation, but are very powerful indeed. They live with their potential to overcome all other creations, but as yet are secondary in power. Shapira, Robert Shapira channeled, among others, he channeled positive beings, but there is some positive being whose charge was to create disease and to control the lifespan of all physical beings in the universe, more like that. The reason for this was to be actually kind to these species. Eternal life in a body is not a positive thing. Does this make sense to you? Of course, yes. Thank you. I would invite more questions. Anybody has urgent questions? Yeah, there was yeah. a question from Rene. Um, and I'll just read what he wrote. He says, um, I had done some drawings, and um, there was one in the middle that I supposed to look like a reptilian. Yes. Um, and he wrote, uh, the one in the middle with the green coloring around it uh, is familiar to me. In my sleep state, I saw an image very similar to that. I remember he was wearing some kind of peach coloring toga. I had this mind contact about three years ago in upstate New York. I remember he was telling me they were a warrior race and they once were a warrior race. Uh, um, do you know anything about that particular ET race? They were a warrior race at one time, but now they are a peaceful, more peaceful race. They still have their moments. They have come through great difficulties and have realized that war and 
war being warriors is not a complete life. There must be balance. And their balance has come about, and they are actually more peaceful now. They do not want me to continue to speak about them. They would rather speak on their own, on their own behalf, because they feel that when we speak about them, others speak about them, there is a chance for error. We invite them to come for some time. Thank you. We, they will speak to this person. All right. Okay. Thank you. They would personally rather speak to them and tell them what the situation is rather than have an outsider, as they speak to me as, Sabrina, speak you had, for them. All right. Sabrina, you had more qu personal questions? Your questions? I yes. Have, when, could you please hold for one minute? I have to speak to Gabriel for a moment. Of course. And then we will come back to you. Okay. Gabriel, the, the ball, the golden ball that you have received will help calm you. And the reason why you were chosen for this is because you were living much too much in a spiritual state. You must, on earth, live in the full body. Do you understand? Yes. Your vibration is high, but in order to make it fully what it should be, you must live in the entire body. I feel more it, in my body now. Does it help you with that? Yes. Very good. It has been great this week. Wonderful. I understand it. it will help you with your human side. Does that make sense to you? Yes. You will be able to relate to humans better now. That is why the orb is there. To help you remain in the body and to bring up from Mother Earth that grounding that you need to live on Earth. Because as it was, you were not fully living your life. You were living in many channels of spirituality and could not even relate to Earth in many ways. Is this true? Yes, to some degree. Yes. This will help. And you are going to notice it. You noticed it right away, I'm sure. I felt it when it came in. Yes. And you said you had a very good week. This will is a reason, one of the reasons. I had trouble sleeping because then I it I feel it so much when I before I go to sleep. So it will come. Yes. Go I, ahead. For first I need to get used to it, probably. Yes. But things will be fine. You are young. You will be able to handle the changes that come. Sabrina. Yes. Continue. Can, can I just ask one question in reference to that? Why does he need to be more grounded if we're shifting and bringing up our vibration? He needs to be living in the human body. The body, entire body must be awakened in order to move up in your vibration the way you should. As humans, you you move your vibrations in a certain way. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So he needed the orb to, yes, ground him so that he could actually become a part of humanity to help it. Oh, okay. Because he is a light worker and a leader. But he cannot function as a human as of yet, totally. He does have many human qualities, but there are many alien qualities in him that he that did not relate to Earth's ways. I understand. 
Um, you were going to ask a question. Correct. Um, one of my question was, um, I had had uh, three times an entity come in, um, and I would like to know who it is. Um, it's a very strong energy, and I'm not able to talk. Let me, one moment. This was not a usual entity. Its power is greater than mine. But it is a light being. You were entered by a light being did they communicate with you? Um, the only thing it, it it did two things. The one time I went down the stairs, sat in front of my son, and all it told me is, "You must love humanity as you love your son." Ah, uh, yes, it was definitely a very high spiritual being. It's rare that anyone is possessed by angelic powers, but this could have been an angelic possession. And then another time, um, it came in, and then it told me I have this friend who's sick. Um, it sort of like stepped aside. I drove to her house. Then it took over again, um, did some healing on her, um, which she felt very strongly, and and then it left. Yes, a high angelic being, very powerful. Mm, you in the human realms, it loses some of its power, but still, a very powerful being indeed. Can, can you give me a name or something so that I can refer to the being? They will tell you themselves. Okay. When, let me see if they will tell me. It was Gabriel. Gabriel was the entity. Thank you. I would invite if you and Sabrina can speak alien languages, it would be wonderful. She has a new alien language. Yes. What may I hear it? Um, let me see. Turkutu, Tikti, Rumadana, Yukuru, Tedan, Kutski, Kur, Mutana, Kalakata Kutsi, Yutu Batataka, Skunumi, Yutu Kuri, Kitikutu, Mutana, Kutu, 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 Kut
あらなのこいつか、僕だい、キュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュキュ That's Arcturian? I, I, I thought when I heard it, it sounded different. It is, a, it is a dialect of Arcturian. There are several dialects of all languages. So oh, okay. There, when we speak English, there are English, and then there's Australian English, there's the England English. They sound different, do they not? Yes. But. These different dialects, and plus, you have other languages on your planet. You call them different things, but this is an Octorian, one of the Octorian languages. So,、uh, one of the questions I had is like, I, I know we can be told what.、Um, you will what... know more soon. Okay. You are a multi linguist in galactic language. Therefore, I would think that you will become an ambassador of some sort. I would invite you to dialogue. Can you speak any language together? Octorian? Any language. Any language you both、oh. know. She knows Pleiadian. Say something to me in Pleiadian, one of the three dialects that you know.、Um, I, I, I did practice one in your language. It was、oh, just、yeah. one of the ones that. Ishio Toha. Oh. Mokwa Shontia. Takoka. Mokwa Taha. Mokuto. Wotha Fuhaitia. Would you like to know what we were talking about? Yes, yes, please. <laughs> She was introducing me to her other languages by saying that her other languages are much different than Lyran, but that she enjoys speaking Lyran just as much. She loves to speak these languages because she feels like they're going out and enhancing the world. And they are. And I told you this that all the things that you speak and do, your intention is always positive. And so whenever you speak these languages, you will go out with positivity into the other realms. Does this make sense? Yes, yes, because I was.、Um... <sighs> I, I was talking to Mother Nature, to the earth,、um, the one time, and I was blessing it,、mm. but I was trying to use the different languages to do it. Whoa. Very good. But you see, when you're speaking these other languages, the tonalities and the different aliens that hear them are all affected. Okay. This is good. Oh, okay. Do not be upset that you do not know what you are to do in the future. They are still deciding what, which ways to use you to the best of their abilities. Okay. Thank you. I would like Gordon to speak if he's there. Gordon. Are you there, Gordon? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, you're good. Your camera is off. 
Tá. Uh, yes, me? Yes. What was your question? Uh, the question I asked to the group, um, what is the most pivotal thing oh. as a species, as a human race, uh, that resonates best with you to occur uh, as a species in our history? Have we kind of given misinformation about Egypt. what resonates best with you? Egypt is the most misunderstood. I will tell yeah. you some things that have been revealed about Egypt. They, the stones were not put in place by slaves dragging them up. They were levitated. There was also communication devices all around the tops of the pyramids, in the Sphinx, many communication devices that could link galaxies together. This has been rumored many times that there are things there, but the actual history is written as human history and it's actually more alien. Mm -hmm. There is things inside the Sphinx and under the pyramids that will interest mankind when they find them and they will realize that this was not a true human colony. This is probably one of the greatest of your misunderstandings. Does that make sense to you? There was a yes, that there was a crystal on top of the Great Pyramid that was the divine communicator. Mm. They called it a divine communicator, but it was actually just a mechanism. But it had the ability to also channel with spiritual worlds. Mm -hmm. So therefore, yes, your Egyptian history will change eventually. Interesting. I mean, as you know, that, that resonates deeply with me, and I immediately think, looking at the dimensions of the Giza pyramids due to the golden ratio and seeing it, basically what you're saying is the pyramid would act as a catalyst to concentrate the energy to, through the crystal, in a sense? Correct. It and, would work both ways because... Um, of the shape and of it could actually bring communication down and collect energy within the pyramid and then that energy could be utilized to send back up. Mm -hmm. And they could also, there is also there is also 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 machinery and mechanics within the pyramid that have not yet been discovered. Not all of it was taken with them. As you will find, I, under, I, they, especially under the, but there is a life-changing thing within the Sphinx as well, and there is a way to open the Sphinx, but you have not discovered it yet. Without breaking it. Yes, it is a mechanical device. Interesting. So, Are they? Are they onto something near the Giza pyramid? They, they have discovered a, and as you know, media doesn't always give the full truth. They have discovered a possible new catacombs, or in a sense, back door to the Giza pyramids. It's about I don't know the exact dimensions, how far from it, but it's possibly in another entrance that's now being discovered that could lead to greater tunnels because, as you know, it's all there's a large tunnel underground. Yes, this will. This is true, but they are not okay. telling you what they are finding in these back tunnels yet. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. They are discovering things that are not part of the Egyptian history as yet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> any more questions? Caitlin is back. Uh, Gordon, do you have any questions more? 
Yeah, Kate. go ahead, guys. Kate Lynn. Oh, hello. <laughs> I Your heard. dream about the 14th. Yeah, the Yael told me that contact will be made on the 14th. One moment. That is correct, but not this year. <laughs> next year? April next year? Perhaps. That is a set parameter within a certain parameter of next April. The 14th would be the center of that parameter. Okay. What kind of contact? Yes. The contact 2015 is still intact. What is the estimated probability? About 82%. Oh, wow. So, like, is this contact with me or contact with everybody? Contact with the Earth. Official okay. open. The official contact with the Earth is within time parameters that you can understand. Okay. He also told me something about a king, and I don't really understand that, but... What did um, you say? I don't know. He, he was just telling me some history, and then he mentioned a, a king. I don't know what kind of species the king was. Maybe Yael, maybe not. But, yeah. He's speaking about a king that comes from Earth that goes to the sky. I'm not sure. I think he... I, I don't remember that part. I just remember him... Um, there he is... There is a king that it resides on Earth that comes from another species. He was brought here to escape a world that was in turmoil. Because they wanted to preserve their king, they sent him here with a human body. But he will return to them soon. Oh. Wonderful. Fascinating. Is it the race which we communicate with, or some some other unrelated? You know, their race has been mentioned in these parameters. Thank you. Interesting. It is a godlike race in some ways. Wow. Because they are very close to their evolution as well, except it's to the sixth dimension. Oh, from very little body to no physical body. But Earth is the safest place for this being at this time, because no one would look for him here and still would not. Even if they heard that he was here, they would not want to come here. Strange. To Earth. But what can happen to a spirit? I mean, he incarnates as a human, right? Yes. How a spirit can be harmed? It cannot, but they would not want to go back to third dimension. It is primitive. And they would not know where to look. How? I mean, the king, you say the spirit of the king is hiding here. Why can't it hide anywhere else? Why does he have to incarnate? That is not for me to answer. All right, thank you. Jakir, I have a few more questions, if I might. Mm, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, in case there would be a Third World War beginning, could our intergalactic friends prevent uh, nuclear devices from being used this time? They have already prevented several nuclear devices from being used. Yes, thank you very much. Um, and this time as well, if they would be, you know, because Iran has nuclear and Korea, North Korea has nuclear, America. If the gods permit. Uh, okay. And one thing I don't quite understand is this. Our, our ET friends have to be very careful, like, about what they say and where they're exactly from and the language is being used, but your capabilities are much more superior to our government 
whatever our government tries to infiltrate or whatever. So I don't understand the need for secrecy exactly because there's nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear from us. Is it the reptilians that you fear finding out more information or is it our government, secret government, etc.? There are many reasons to withhold communications. One is so that you will not be afraid of the future. One is to let not those that are negative become part of the plan to destroy you with more information. Does that make sense? Okay. Also, humanity, the governments, do not even understand. When we keep something from them, it is because we fear that they will misunderstand what we are saying and think that we are going to war with them. There are certain informations they look for, key words that they look for, that will trigger them to take action against us. They know we are here. Mm -hmm. But I do not want to be one that would actually say something that would might trigger an, a reaction from Earth. It is not meant to be that way. Mm -hmm. okay. We are coming in peace. And to maintain that peace with your government, there must be some secrecy. Okay, thank you. And when contact would happen, like in April of next year or the beginning of April of next year, would it be simultaneous around the world or would it be just Twelve. in one spot? Twelve different locations. Okay. And the United States would be one of them? Of course. <laughs> okay. And one more question about my son. Is there anything he can do to communicate with those who are trying to scan him right now? No. No. Okay. Thank you very much, Takir. Can you can you speak more about spirit guides? Uh, how much are they involved in general? What's the ratio between things which are events which are under their control in design and random events? Your spirit guides are there to help you when you have needs. They help you when you call upon them. They do not necessarily help you at every situation because they do not hear what you need necessarily. They know some things that you need and they will help you as much as possible. However, it is interesting that a lot of people do not even know they have spirit guides and so they cannot help them as much. But How can we? The more you can speak to your spirit guides, the more you get to know your spirit guides, the better they can help you. I was under the opposite, uh, very mystical perception of life for, for the whole life. Anything that happens around me, I perceived as a message of gods and spirit guides yes. and angels. Others will help you. Yes, there are uh, those outside your spirit guides that help you as well because you call upon them, you pray to them, you ask for their help. They are there when you need your help. You call on your, your daughter, your son, there are those that help you, but it is always when you get to know those people better, the better they can help. But my recent understanding was that many things are happening at random and happening at random. There is no one responsible in the spirit world and higher worlds for those. That but you can ask for help with those random things as well. Help me with my the random daily life, and they can help with that. Yes, I got it. The question is, was I wrong interpreting that everything that happens to me, positive or negative, negative, any event where the randomness, randomnessity is expressed, I was interpreting as a message. And uh, now I kind of realize that maybe it wasn't a message. Maybe it was just random. Not everything is a message. Not everything. You're correct. So what percent of the middle-sized events in my life are under control of higher forces? The day that you spoke of that many things were broken, mm -hmm. your 
spirit guides had nothing to do with that. However, aliens did. Oh. But it, it had nothing to do with your spirit guides, and so they, that is what they told you. It was not us. So my worldview is very was very egocentric. Everything was around me to guide me somewhere. And now I realize that maybe I'm creating those events and nobody else is guiding me, that it is kind of random creation of my own uh, outlook. Is it right? To some extent. Not completely. Mm -hmm. There is spiritual activity all around everyone. Mm -hmm. And yes, it is for you, but to be egocentric about it is not the purpose. You are in a community, a world. Mm -hmm. And so some of these things that happen to you are not to be seen as just for you, but you are learning so that you can help the world. You see, it goes out from you, not into you. Does that make sense? Thank you. Uh, negative events, like repetitive negative events. I go offer my help, it was turned down. I go to another place, offer my help, it's turned down. Is yes. it for the purpose? Is there a higher guidance there, or I just failed several times? There is higher guidance as well, because you will find your perfect spot when you are ready for it. And then that will be where you blossom and grow. They are holding you back for a reason, which I cannot tell you at this moment. But there is a reason. I understand. So the ratio, in, at least in meaningful events, the ratio between the random failures and higher guidance is what? One to one? Or it's always higher guidance? You have such a scientific <laughs> mind that it does not make sense to think of it that way, actually. Oh, where am I wrong? <laughs> they, they help you when they need to and when they have to, and you will fall into line whenever the, this happens. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio. It's not a ratio of any sort that we know of, because it happens as it happens, you see. The synchronicity of your world and the synchronicity of our world come together, but it's not in a in an algorithm that your mind can understand. Or any human mind, actually. But there is there is a mathematics to it, but it's not what you think. What is what is the best way to ask the guides to help us? Just by being honest and open and truly yourself your perfect self and in love ask. But do we do it mentally or, or do we speak it out loud? What's You can do it. There are some of you that must speak out loud because the density of your thoughts are too close and cannot be depicted separately from one another. So saying it out loud is the safest. What is the power of spirit guides? What can they do? For example, I'm driving and I feel that yesterday I was driving I felt that my tire kind of goes flat and I prayed can you kind of watch over my tire is it in their power to watch over it yes they probably are the one that gave you the inkling that it was something to pray about they got a hold of your attention and you got a hold of theirs so it was in that case it was one on one but not always so the, it is in their capacity yes. to control, but they can't see me, right? They cannot see... They can. They don't see you until you look in the mirror, but they see your inner parts. They can see as spirits would see. Chakras? Yes, they can see that. Now, they discovered very recently, like, I had a chronic, small chronic illness, and apparently they didn't know about it until another my friend alien told them mm -hmm. how is it possible if they see all the chakras how can they not know about that illness they are they do not look at that sometimes they're more spiritually oriented so uh -huh. they do see some things but they are not understanding if they are not human 
some of them are not human, so they would not understand it as a flaw in your body. And some of them are human and would see it as just something that they've seen many times before and we're not concerned about. They're more concerned about your spiritual well-being and they're more concerned about preserving you in the sense that you don't have major accidents or things of that nature. They can suggest uh -huh. things to you. They can suggest things if they feel that your body is that far unable to function, they can suggest to you what to do about it. Mm -hmm. When I'm writing poetry, are they involved? If you involve them, they are. Oh, so I can write poetry without their help? You can write poetry without their help. And grant applications? Yes, but they do help you. Near-death experience. Yes. Near-death near experience. Yes. They are those that will let you see things in your near-death experience, yes. They are actually when, going when with you as you go. If you are heading for death, your spirit guides will help you along that channel, that path, till you are inside the gates of the spirit realm. Mm. Here is a very much related question. So when I meditate, I, for the last few months, I kind of, first I'm, my, my, my consciousness, I'm conscious. And then at some point there is a click and I see the light coming. Who is that coming? The, the light in my mind, is it? My higher self? Is it spirit guides? It is probably your higher self, but for each individual it can be someone else. But for you, I believe it is your higher self and your subconscious. Yes. Wonderful. So Jim, when somebody enters or exits, and Bashar as well, there is a jolt. He kind of shifts. Yes. And sometimes it's multiple jolts. And yes. recently I discovered that when I meditate, I also get a jolt. And after that, uh, Usually it's like hand or leg, and then there is somebody, the light is entering. Yes. This is definitely a channel in you opening, and you're bringing in that particular light. Higher self, or perhaps a spiritual entity coming with higher self. Oh, wow. So now when I exit, I'm happy there somewhere in other, on the other side. And then usually I have, you know, I'm in a hurry, so there's a time event, like somebody is coming or buses arrive, you know, things like that. So somebody brings me before, like pulls me down, and I arrive to my body before the alarm rings or the bus arrives or somebody enters the room. Who is doing that? I cannot answer that. Thank you. I do not know. Oh. What well, it may be part of your third eye perception at this time. Oh. Well, oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate your assistance and help and, and uh, insight. Um, when, when Mark is in that space, um, and if he asks a question, so he can ask a question directly to his uh, higher mind, and we'll get an answer from him. Yes. Yeah. Um, Major has a question. Major, Major was asking uh -oh. in chat if he can ask. Ravi. Ravi. Greetings. Greetings. I have an aquatic question. Yes. Um, I would like to ask about um, Japan because yes. we all know what's happening there. Yes. Um, I would like to ask about the state of the Pacific Ocean, how life is being affected in the Pacific Ocean, what we can do about it. And also, if it is true about the shark's capability of absorbing certain radioisotopes. Yes. The state of your ocean on that side near Japan is a big problem. We have tried to remove some of the radiation from these areas, but it is 
too much. Having three reactors melt down is a lot to handle, especially when we're working with weather and other things as well. And plus, it is those people in that area, those the ship that's in that area that's dealing with this, and they had to call for backup. More ships are coming from Grookvik near. Now, understand that we do not fly here from our planet through space. We fold time and come that way. It's too Understood. dangerous. It's too dangerous to fly through space. Let me tell you why. Because there's many, many areas of gas. And it would explode us in a moment if we were doing thrusters and things of that nature. But to get back to Japan, they're also having more seismic activity right now, which is unfortunate. Because they, of all the places on Earth, they need it the least. But yes, the ocean around has been affected. Many fish and animals in the sea are dying because of this radiation. And yes, the sharks can attract some of this energy, and it is because they are not a species that were developed on the Earth. Yes, they cannot get cancer, is what I've been told. Yes, they cannot. There's also another thing I'd like to ask about Japanese technology um, that they may be holding in secret. Um, I'm not sure if you would be aware of this. They have Do much. they have the ability to disintegrate radionuclides? They have this ability, but it is not controlled as yet. Through magnetics, correct? Correct. There are things that they have that are experimental that are not exactly working the way they should. They are quite confident about it, but I know it's very secret. They don't want other nations knowing about it. They do not want other nations knowing about many of their secrets, as well as many other countries have secrets. Oh, yes. <laughs> United States has many secrets. England has secrets. Russia has secrets. Do, do Sweden know about aliens? Government? The, all major governments of the world know about aliens. Sweden does as well. There was a conference at the UN about it. Yes. There was. Held in secret. <laughs> yes. But you are right. There is many dire problems over in the Pacific area near Japan. Of all the areas of the world, United States and Japan are the most concerned because of the seismic and volcanic activity that is possible at this time. So, Tucker, may, may I ask you uh, one thing? So besides prayer, is there anything else we can do to stop the, these uh, seismic activities, especially particularly in Japan? And uh, how imminent is the danger? It is. is. Is there any? You can give me a kind of a percentage of, of uh, you know, within one terms? year. There will have to be a major seismic activity. Within one year, major seismic activity will have to relieve itself, as you might say, because it is so built up at this time. We are trying to move things gently, more gently than it would possibly move at first. There are ways of disintegrating rock that would cause major problems. Does this make sense to you at all? Yes, yes. Under the surface of your planet, yes. mm -hmm. there's a mantle, and this mantle is breaking up at an 
an astonishing rate in some areas. And therefore, we have moved some rock out of the way so that it will not push up through the earth. It is a very difficult and very sensitive operation. So when the Earth moves to the fourth dimension, would it resolve the issues? Would it be healthier for Earth? Not necessarily at this time. If, if you were in fourth dimension, there would still be problems with the third dimensional Earth. But the fourth dimensional Earth would be healthy? The fourth dimensional Earth does not quite exist yet, except in other dimensions. So when we shift within a couple hundred years, would that seismic problem resolve and the Earth become healthier? I cannot give you that answer. But I can tell you this. There is a fourth dimensional Earth that does exist beyond your dimension. Okay. Not that you were aware of. of different course, reality. A different reality, exactly. Okay. But the, these things are not important at this time, even. What is important is that this, this reality remains intact. This reality survives. There is a reason for that. There is a concept very popular among light workers uh, that shifting would make the Earth healthier and heal it because the Earth wants to shift. Is it yes. right? To some extent, that is correct. But to another extent, Mother Earth suffers during these shifts. Oh. There's damage done, and yes, it would heal, but there are scars for many millions of years. But I cannot explain to you how this works at this time. I actually am losing energy. All right. Thank you very much for so many answers. Thank you, Takir. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did anybody Thank not get their you. question? Aloha. <coughs> the, Aloha. Aloha. The island you asked about me last time, you were right about one of the names, at least. I found it. Oh. Mukla Flugga. Oh. Mukla Flugga Island. Very good. This is it. He is speaking about an island that has much alien activity because it is very sparsely populated and is in a part of the world that um, is not being monitored as much as other parts. It would be the Shetland Islands. It only has uh, one building, I think, on the island. Yes, and there's much alien activity up there because the population is small and they do not really, they see the things in the sky, but it's not a concern to them. Mm. Yes, I have I friends who live there and they have confirmed this. Yes. Just one small thing about uh, first contact. Yes. When, uh, when, to allow it to happen, we have to be a certain uh, state, all of us. Um, is it more? Uh, is it better to or, or? What is the most important to to be alien aware or to be enlightened? Both are necessary, but to be alien aware would be a good thing. Because if you are not alien aware, it will be very frightening. Yes, because it's a lot easier to talk about these concepts uh, when you talk about enlightenment and all this metaphysical stuff. But, than, than to talk about aliens. But even when you are enlightened and alien aware, it still may be frightening because of who you are as a And that is why we bring these messages of peace. It's like for you when a relative passes on and you knew for a long time that they were sick and ill and they were going to pass on. The yeah. time that they pass on still affects you greatly. Does it not? Yeah. 
this is how first contact will be. You will be prepared yes. for it, but yet it will be an emotional shock to you because it's actually happening. And because the vibration you yes. you come with. Yes. yes. I must go. All right. Thank you. Woo-ha. 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 Namaste to you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you for sharing. Jim, welcome back. What is your tea? Hi, you Jim. Hey. Hey, welcome, hey, Jim. Welcome back. Hey. That was long. Hi. Wow. Hi, Jim. Hello, everybody. Hi, welcome back. Um, Hi, Jim. I have to have my thirst quenching. When I get <laughs> done uh, with the aliens, they leave me thirsty. <laughs> Maybe they can drink water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How is everybody it's doing out there? That's like though, an it? hour. <laughs> Good. That was like an hour to have straight. Wow, that was long. Yeah. Are you I've okay? Never seen to speak that long. Oh my gosh. I feel good though. So are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> good. I'm fine. So uh, we have um, a letter to support this dude's invitation for alien ships on the side, and few people signed it, and I think it is a great um, help. Uh, you don't know about it, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, basically, this dude invited invited more ships to come. I think they had four ships and invited three more, or something like that. I don't remember exact number. I don't know exact numbers, but. Um, they invited more of Girk Fitnir ships to help the, the Earth stability. All right. And we posted this invitation. I posted the, inv the invitation. Basically, we are supporting that invitation. And uh, some people signed it in comments. Oh, cool. So I invite more of that. And I didn't ask the curb if, if that helps, but I know it is. It helps. I do know. So uh, next time they, you know, next time you talk to them, you can ask if that is of help and I, I'm okay. sure they would confirm. Maybe. In the past we did that and it was, a, you know, even few light workers when it is uh, basically Gork in internal Gork Fitnir event, it is one thing, but when light workers from Earth support that, that's, uh, that is, goes to the, ne to the different level. Yes. There was another thing I wanted to discuss. Um, so, Again, in, in that past session, which I had to cut it out because it was a private session and it was intended basically for me and Jim, uh, a friend came, Pentium, AAL Pentium. Now we have a new, oh, he, he's there, he's on, uh, he, he know, you know him. So he suggested that our way of inviting help, financial and other help, other meaning activity on the side. I really appreciate Liney, Slava, uh, Sabrina doing Facebook. Laura. Is, what is Laura doing? Oh, Laura, yes. Lo, yeah, LJ. LJ is, your, your name is LJ. LJ. Uh -huh. And Gordon really becoming excellent. And Sefir becoming really being involved in, in many ways, and we there are other people, people that are wonderfully involved. It's so amazing. being involved is important. Uh, Ellie, Ellie brought us lots more visitors, and Jim has immediate uh, that allows him to pay his house bill. You know, he right now the last couple weeks have been really, really very good. I've been real blessed the last couple weeks. Thanks, Ellie, for. Uh, Posting our videos on Lightworker site. Basically, we are covering. I think we are covering about 80% of Lightworker sites, yes. which is not that many. It's about 15, 20 NING sites, mm -hmm. but Facebook pages are not covered. So please help us there. So 
pending said the way we invite help is suboptimal and it can be improved. One thing we always mention donations and there is I always mention how poor we are and we need your money and he says it's negative. It is doesn't help people to help because they feel it's just another way of advertising and it is another way of advertising but it's very inefficient. So he said that we should say that it is all right to help us. It is really right thing to do and you know we are here because you're here and it's really hard for us to keep going but we we do that because it's needed. Now uh, we do. I it's hard because you're making it hard. These two definitions uh, need to change the definitions and make it easy for the money to come in, have that attitude and I've gone through this experience in the last few years of my life and been very poor and now the money is starting to manifest its way in and we just got to be very careful how we define our our words and yeah, our meanings. I, I'm starting to... Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm very much a, a believer in that when you... that. The, of the law of uh, attraction because it's really working for me uh, it really is does work so because I would never ever if you told me ten years ago that I would be here doing this <laughs> not working and making a living by channeling and doing Reiki and working in people's gardens I would say Wow, you need to see a psychiatrist. So, <laughs> but I am here by the grace of God and by the love that you share and the love that you have for the aliens. And it is working for me. It is working for me. All right, so. Uh, I love it. Thank you. I appreciate yes. all your love. Here is the. I appreciate it too. Uh, my technical technical suggestion. I watch, I listen, this is called radio, radio, talk radio, I, I forgot the name. Blood Talk Radio? No, Blood, some other one. New York, made in New York City, it's Radio Lab, that's what it is. Radio Lab? Okay. Radio Lab. Lab, Lab. yeah. Lab. Okay. So these are actually incredibly great in all ways, group of people, very talented. It's just a new generation of of uh, blogging, video, uh, audio blogging, that, that's what it is. Audio blog. They are very scientifically oriented and they touch the topics which are very much light worker topics, but they speak it in a way which doesn't scare the mainstream public. So they do, the, do it amazingly. They talk about all sorts of things, quantum theory, and uh, mind over matter and these sort of things, but in a way that is very scientifically enlightened and very spiritually enlightened. And the way they advertise themselves, they invite you guys, the audience, to advertise for, for them. So instead of them reading their advertisement, please support us, blah, 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 they let the audience to read these things. So people call on the answering machine and leave their kind of read aloud messages and then they play it as advertisement. It works great, especially when children do that or when people, some people are just talented in that. So so I'm inviting this as well. I don't have the voicemail line set up for that. If you really need voicemail, you can call my phone, it's on the site. Or Jim, no, Jim is not set up. My phone and I can take that message and play it back at the end or in between of those. But you, you know, you can also help by writing it on a computer or writing it on your smartphone or smart pad. Or another way of doing that would be the YouTube. If you go on YouTube, upload and then click uh, record your webcam. You can just record your webcam and then share it with me. You don't have to publish it. You just uh, do unlisted version. Can you and show me how to do that? Because I have a big file that I need to send to Safira and I can't send it. It's too big. Of course. Show me how to do that. It is use Dropbox. Thank uh, you. Or uh, you send it. You send it. Google, Google Drive as well. You can 
if you have uh, a Google Drive, yes. A Google Drive? Uh, Jim, uh, I will You're help. Show me. Yeah, I will show you. <laughs> show me. So I'm not I'm not computer savvy, so. And your, vi your, your vision is is limited. My, so. my vision is limited, and I'm not computer savvy, but so Max can help. So what can you say there? First introductions. I mean, we introduce ourselves all the time, and I. I think people are tired of my introductions. How about <laughs> you introduce us? What we really do? Because on the website there is the impression it started as an invitation to human call and it's still still valid. There is also invitation to Utopia Five and there is also invitation for donating your DNA for voluntary hybridization program. But this is a smaller part of what we do now. More so important is regular channeling sessions and private sessions and chat in between which is important. So how about you talk why it is important for you and for listeners and everybody and we then we broadcast it. Obviously if you can show your face moving like video face that is two levels up. It's really people really look at your eyes and see how you uh, if you believe in what you say, because it's much easier to speak th when when your face is not shown. It's like way easier because you know it's much e mm. even if you. I mean, your you know showing face is hard. So second thing, if you can show your face while recording, you're on the webcam. Just give your photograph. That would help. If you can do that, that's fine. You can do just audio, and then we'll you know we also invite. Ed video editors. There are a few talented video editors there no. who can put together these voices and something else no. to, to bring it in. I'm not sure what you're asking them to do. Oh, advertisers. Oh. Send us money, but you know, <laughs> say okay. you say that but, to other people. So so basically, so basically, what you're asking for is Our for guys. everyone to say why is this website important to us. How has it changed us? How has it helped us? Yes. Okay. Not, it's more than website because it's a community. If website goes down, we get just move to another website, right? No, now right, but but this particular one yeah, has activity helped community. open doors to a lot of us. So how has it done that? Yes. Yeah. Inviting more people and uh, okay. how can you send us money and help in all other ways. And you're gonna play these on Talk club, or are you gonna play? Put this on no, right here. the website. I will play it in the end. You can put them in the site. I will put them on the on YouTube page on the site, and in this video there is a way to play YouTube. Today it didn't work, but basically later we'll compile that in YouTube, and in the beginning or in the middle or in a uh, toilet break we will play the the you know as you usual. I mean we're doing the classical. Uh, Show a TV show. That's a TV show what we do, and they have commercials. We'll do commercials, <laughs> but the commercials of new type are of less commercial style and really like more of uh, of people supporting us, telling what it is, and you can share your experiences as well. So my Max is my link to commerciality. <laughs> <laughs> but I anyway, like works, to... works. Oh. Jim now is supported uh, part of your. Uh, Support comes from private sessions over Skype and telephone, and yeah. part of it comes from Reiki sessions. Reiki yeah. sessions also, he, you do Reiki and then you yeah. do spiritual consultation, which is uh, essential. Mm -hmm. That's why people come; they kind of come to sp talk to their spirit guides and yeah, other guides. Yeah, during Reiki, sometimes I will channel their spirit guides or things, and so part of their Reiki session is channeling as well. So mm -hmm. not always. But when they come, they come. So. Also, text-wise, if you want to advertise as text-wise, it's also helps. If you write a good text, some other some people are talented writing text, and then others can read it aloud. That also would help. If you read somebody else's, we have now, now encouragement category, and uh, if you just read aloud that encouragement thing, that also would work as advertisement. Yeah. I'm I sorry, like that's how things work these days. Uh, <laughs> I wish. I wouldn't worry about that. I mean, yeah, there I are more interesting that, things. Yeah. Of, uh, I'm that, worried, that. yeah, I'm more interested in the commercial things. That I know we need money su to survive. That's our, that's the way of the world. But um, we're more interested in the spirituality and uh, what the messages are. But, I would like uh, we, yeah. 
<laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to get in there. Uh, sorry about that. Yes, uh, speaking of a spiritual message, I have uh -huh. to say, <laughs> I have to say that I left the, I left Google Hangouts in order to, for somebody else to be able to come in in the beginning I after I was done speaking with Jakir, and I was in the kitchen and this, and I felt so much love. I felt such an urge, like oh. I have to come back, I have to be back, I have to be back. And I don't know if anybody else feels this beautiful energy or special love, but I just I just had to come back and be part of it. So does anybody feel else good. Feel feel good. Back? Yeah, you feel happy? Yes. Does anyone else experience a kind of um energetic connection while you're here talking in the in the Yeah, it's nice. The Jesus with you I got very Enlightened after mm. you had on your website. Uh, so much energy came from me that time. Oh, fabulous. That's great. I love that. I love it when the energy goes out to you guys, that the, uh, the aliens connect with you personally. I like that. But now I have the orb inside of me, so I. Yes. <laughs> I would assume the orb would make you more spiritual, but apparently it's just for grounding. It's like a heavier weight for you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that your only help? But I become more spiritual by being more grounded. Yes. Excellent. Yes. That's Very good. wise point there. Very wise. Yep. Yeah, you've got to be connected to, to be body, yeah. going in both directions. I have to be more human. <laughs> well, you need to be able to connect to humans have, in order to I help them. Same advice as well, Gabriel. So. <laughs> but it was a miracle. He was uh, promised an orb, and then he got an orb, and then he got the confirmation here that he got it. So, yeah. but, but 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 they said uh, six months, and it just went one or two weeks or something. Yes. <laughs> so I, I was waiting for six months. Right. Oh. They gave it to you faster than you they promised, so that's a good thing. Usually they're slow. <laughs> <laughs> now, now when it came to taking our uh, DNA for hybridization, they were really fast about that. <laughs> yes, they have it, and now they have, they're waiting to use it. So. Yeah. Yeah. For them, it was very important. Uh, it's kind of a redemption. You were guilty of something, and then when you endorsed to do what you were doing in secret. It is so much relief for them. And it's been come to my attention that they're they're taking a lot of children but only with their permission and teaching them things. And parents permit I was insisted yes, it's, it's, I insisted that parents have to give permission and Well they're also talking to the parents about how to treat their children that they're teaching, which is mm -hmm. very interesting. Mm -hmm. Liney, have you had any is she there? Oh, she stepped out. Because Liney would be a perfect example of that. Uh, you, you, you can't. Oh, I can't say that. You can't say much. Well, she would be an example. When she's there and when she supported. I yeah, thought but she was there. So. Still no. Okay, but um, anyway. I just asked her to come back in. Huh? I just asked her to come back in if she's on Skype. No, no, no. Um, it's okay. It's okay. But anyway, uh, there is many examples of this around the world now that they're they're teaching our children many things about the changes that are to come. Mm -hmm. So it's a wonderful thing, but they they one of the things that is a problem is they they can't always relate to humanity with these things, and so they they have to be grounded. <laughs> yeah, for grounding, I uh, again I do Reiki on Earth. It's one thing of grounding. Another yeah. thing is uh, when I meditate, I fo focus on my uh, root chakra. Apparently, that was advice from Buddha and others. Focus on your root chakra and start your meditation from root chakra, which I, normally I would do heart chakra. It's much more natural for me, heart uh -huh. and head. I kind of that's my meditation. Connect heart and head. But they say about focus on root chakra, so I do that now. And food, when you eat food, focus on it. It's really get into your body. It's so unusual for me. Really feel no, it's my body, these are my hands, this is food, it goes in it's so unusual. Mm -hmm. Just focusing on you know physicality is so 
kind of difficult for us. But well, not only that, but when you focus on um, giving thanks to the plants and the animals mm -hmm. for for giving up, you know, the the animals for giving up their lives, the exactly. plants for, for you. Yeah. Yes. Extremely important. It is. Um, Hey, Max. Yeah, you should always pray to your food, and that's why a prayer is said oh, um, yeah. a lot around the world before you have food to give blessings for that food. Right. Because not be only will it be more nutritious for you, it will. It's also balancing out how we predatory use that to gain more energy from it. Right. Exactly. Um, Max, do yep. you have a stone and mineral store near you, or do you own a Sodalit stone, do you know what that is? Sodalit? I don't. Stay in the solovite? No, it's Sod called so sodalith. It's sodalit. Sodalit? It's a stone. Yeah, it's a blue, it's a very dark blue stone with white running through it. And wow. this is a stone to connect the mind and the heart together. So if you are in a mineral and stone store near you, and you know where they have these really nice, you know, half um, precious, you know, real natural stones, and you get a sodalit donut and you wear it around your neck, it'll help you connect your mind and your heart. Not that it's not, I'm not suggesting you're not connected, but if you want to connect it a little more. <laughs> yeah, I have many stones, but not this one. I will, I will look into that. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. Caroline had a question. Yes. And she wanted to know if anyone knows how to make high frequency water and can you use distilled water? What frequency is the best to use, and how do you put the frequency in water? As in play music, near it, etc. Tonal generators would be the best. I think another way, though, is to scan your water. Because your, uh, your hand has chakras in them. Do you know that? And uh, you can actually use your hands to scan things and purify things and make them stronger or weaker or whatever like uh, and so I use my hands for if there's something that I'm not sure of if it's good or bad the chakras in your hands will uh, actually help with that I'm, I know there's other ways but I think that the chakras in your hands also help with uh, making water more safe and and taking elements out of them because if you can feel the energy in your hand and your intention is to purify the water I don't see why that would be that wouldn't happen can um, I tell a story? yeah sure it's about the about water and the power of water and also the negativity of water mm -hmm. can be put into it um, there was a group of, I believe it was North Koreans, and they were gathered around a table, a lot of war leaders, discussing some not very nice plans, and obviously they shared the water that was on the table. Now this water on the table made them violently sick, almost to the point of death, because they were talking about such evil things that it contaminated the water. So it just shows you what our positive intention, what, I tell, what our intentions, mm -hmm. water picks up in a memory, and we have to be very, very careful. I, and that's why I'm saying that I believe that you can purify your water and make it intentionally what you want it to be. So, so um, coming back to <laughs> physics, I, I, I bought at some point a distiller for the water, and I hated it. The, the home distilled water doesn't is dead, you know. It's <laughs> not good for you. Evaporates and condenses, and it was so bad I hated it. So I returned the distiller. It wasn't expensive, but it was a complicated machine which basically does that. And um, I use filtered water, and I have a set of stones which are special stones for water. I put them there. Actually, I stopped doing that but I used to do it for several years. And now I do um, broths. I do celery broth. I think celery broth is something which is great for drinking. Uh, or celery carrots. It's more like a soup, vegetable soup, but a little bit of vegetables and a lot of water. And when you boil it, just, it's, it's amazingly good. Also, uh, 
I do herbs, Indian herbs. I, start, I, I did it for many years. Now I switch from Chinese to Indian herbalist, and this is something which changes the whole whole structure of the body. So that's my, instead of tea, I'm doing herbs and water. And um, I'm blanking on something else. That was something else. <laughs> I guess, uh, My ex-partner in Germany, who was a doctor, um, also a, a healer as well. You go to the apothecaries there, and um, they're full of dried herbs, and they will use dry herbs like sage, uh -huh. for example, if you've got a bad tummy, and um, because it's the uh, because it's hot, because it's warm, it goes straight into your system, and you know, it's very good for you. Yes, yes, that that thing. Uh, so what I was blanking on, just switching from herbs to lemon. Bashar said, "Try cold, you know, cool, uh, cool water with a piece of lemon." And apparently, you know, people normally use inside of the lemon, the soft part. But I discovered that outside the skin is even way better. So a little piece of lemon. So that's what we have. We have in the fridge the bottle of water, the jar of water for every for the whole family, with fresh piece of lemon which we change every day. And you know that works great. And thanks to Bashar. <laughs> I think yeah, there's more, there's more vitamin C in the pit, in the um, in the outside than there is in the whole right. of the uh, inside. I don't yeah. think it is the nutrition; it is the structure. I think the lemon just changes the structure of the whole thing. So, so yes, Reiki energy. I know Reiki energy works, and there are some devices that do, that, that saturate the the change the change the structure of the water. So homeopathy. So, oh, oh, the principle of homeopathy: you take something, you dilute it. Once mix, dilute it again, mix, and and there they have excess. So dilute it 200 times, 200. So it's two to the uh, power of 100. So 200 dilution is. You take something and dilute it two to the power of 100. Basically, there is no atom of initial, no initial atoms of that substance in that water. It's just the structure which is inherited from the initial atom. So even if it was mercury, the structure of mercury. It's not the mercury itself. So, I think with the lemon, it's the same thing. It's a little piece which kind of changes the whole jar of water into something else. Okay. Thank you, Max. I've got to go now. Um, Sandy, can you send me a few cookies if I give you my address? What are the cookies? I want some cookies that you made. Anyway, um, blessings and abundance, abundance and abundant blessings to everybody. Bye, Jim. Bye, Sandy. Bye, Max. Bye, everybody. Bye, Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you bye -bye. so much, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. I also wanted to talk to Gardan. Gardan, yeah. I, there. I see you. Yeah. Gardan, yeah. Yeah. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs> or bye, Safira. Bye, those who are leaving. Bye, Safira. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. I'm leaving bye. also. Bye, Gordon. So, Go you guys. wanted to share something. Oh, you wanted to share something? Uh, yeah, um, I'm trying to rem remind me on what in, in reference to. I think I asked mostly about spirit guides and the negativity. Negative things happen. Are they a result of of uh, my mindset or are they lessons? I think that was my main questions for today. Are they a result of your mindset? Are they lessons? Oh, for Sabrina, is Sabrina left already? Anyway, Sabrina, if you watch again, uh, I had uh, one thing. She said, shifting up. Hmm. I'm again blanking on something. What I know of... Yeah, sorry. Yeah, there is a lot of blanking today. <laughs> what I heard is that this will always be one spirit guide with every person here on Earth. Mm -hmm. All the time, so usually there will be a, usually free spirit guides, mm -hmm. and yeah, some of the guide guide will leave you for some time and came back and share what they have done. But there will always be one there with you. Oh. That's what, uh -huh. I, what I uh -huh. That's cool. Interesting. I always uh, I wonder, you know, if you can invite more spirit guides for sp with a specific. Uh, Expertise for specific parts of life. I well, don't know. Yeah, yeah. My understanding is that we all have um, 
three three higher spirit guides of each density. So mm -hmm. a fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensional spirit guide. Uh, I use the term the term densities. People use people use the term uh, dimensions. Um, it's it's kind of based off in the law of one. They speak to it, but um, each density is still three dimensional, from my understanding. But um, you can you you do have three separate spirit guides. Um, I spoke. I don't know exactly what density mine mine was, but she um, she said the other two would like to speak to you and will speak to you at some point. Basically, we always have to understand, um, and, and Major's good about hitting on this point, of understanding time and time-space. It's, 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 it's relative to us in a different sense than it is to them. So when the moments in this current point in our you know, space-time happens, then they will implement, like you, you spoke to Max, not, not random, but more guided catalysts in your life. And I think certain sphere guides are more, uh, re resonate to, do resonate more with you. I know I uh, actually had a changing of sphere guides when I was uh, 6 and 10. Oh, really? How do you know? Um, in, my session with Matt, in my session with Jim, uh -huh. my spirit my spirit guide told me, she said, you actually have had a changing when you were t 6 and 10. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't tell me the exact circumstances in which they happened, but she said you basically, she said it very lovingly, and she said they were called, sometimes spirit guides can be called away because they can be utilized best and most efficiently for somebody else at that time. Mm -hmm. So say for you, Max, a spirit guide is very, very, very well versed in science and logic and left brain thinking, and they need to resonate with you to get you to understand how to evolve on a certain um, aspect of, of you know, this present point. Then they maybe will shift a spirit guide of that nature to you, and maybe the nature, maybe the nature of the spirit guide was very loving and right brained, who was with you, who did their work and was very efficient and giving you those lessons. Will then maybe come to me or somebody else who's lacking in those areas. Uh -huh. So everything in, in, in this entire spectrum of things is all around balance. It's always it's always it comes back to this root of balance of, of of balancing left and right brain, of balancing feminine and masculine energy, of balancing uh, light and dark. It all is still you know negative and positive, or it's still negative and positive polarity is still even based around balance. When you really get to these higher levels of of ascension and understanding, they speak to this this knowledge that it it's it's paradoxical to think this way. And the way humans think, especially, is so many paradoxes and and so many just funny. Th it's funny to them how many paradigms we think and the way we think. It's just silly. Just why would you think this way? When if, if we knew the truth, then you would never act this way. Why would hurt? Why would you hurt other self when knowing that they are yourself? You yes, know? yes. It's that a lot name. about understanding things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. So, I I want to use that opportunity to officially invite uh, more spirit guides to me. Uh, for first business ex with business experience because that's uh, an area where I don't have any experience and I feel that that uh, I need more of that because somehow my life is moving into that direction and second you know my my optogenetic company needs needs more of that guidance and so so far I think I'm m making steps but they are not successful maybe a guide from spiritual guide, uh, spiritual guides might might help well, us. And second you've area, a, you've, you've got ahead. a human working on that for you, Max. So I'm working on something on that for you. No, he's working on that for you. Thank you. You on, on what you said healing? No, financially. Financially, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean business finances and all that. I mean. The business is not only finances, it is uh, talking to people, leadership. making things happen, leadership and uh, group work and all of that is something very new to me. And next thing we do... Uh, we will have a quality, so... Yeah. yeah, I mentally I'm there, but uh, luck-wise I'm not there. So I, I, want, I wish I invite more luck in that direction. Uh, mm -hmm. can, we, can we change it? Does our spirit guides change? Do, some so, come in, yeah. some leave, some go. What, what, what I understand is, uh, what Aisha told me, that the spirit guys are more like your friend, and guardian angels are uh, more like 
your parents, a guardian angel will stay for, for the whole lifetime, but spirit guides can come and go as they wish. But That's you, interesting. Because if you are a science, for example, and then you change to a spiritual being, then you don't need a, need a science spirit a guide, really. Well, yes. If you change too much, and sometimes they just come for you for a certain period of time or something, what I understand. Well, I but had you... a spirit guide change in my life. Oh, how do you know? Um, they told me that Ernest was my grandfather, and he was my spirit guide for a little while. He died <laughs> when I was very young, and he became my spirit guide for a while. But he moved on so that an alien spirit guide could take his place because I have to learn to I had to learn to deal with aliens. So, uh, so my grandfather was my spirit guide in a nurturing way in my younger years, and now I have a uh, an alien spirit guide in his place. That's the one I know that changed. All right, and this. Thank you. And the second area where I need help <coughs> is, uh, again, I'm inviting spirit guides help there um, creating an online community. Apparently, it's something you, most of the spirit guides never lived this, they, did, they didn't live that, that era of human development. And it is something new, the online thing is very new. So none, uh, very few of them would have experience, but Building a community, maybe in the past lives they have experience building a community. Now it's now it's global. You guys are global. It's all over the uh, all over the globe. And building that community, we need more luck and help there. It's it's growing slowly, and maybe it's right that it's growing slowly because when it comes when it grows faster, I become overwhelmed because people start writing lots of letters, and some of them are important. And I just cannot catch. Uh, get, cannot keep it up. Cannot keep up with that. So, so more spiritual would, guidance here would also help. Would you like me to start a Facebook page for Human Colony? Oh, you went there when uh, Sabrina and Gordon. Gordon were discussing. Then, so Sabrina yeah, yeah. already started. Gordon has experience, and that is. Ravi, Ravi, are you suggested? Was it Ravi? Yeah, Ravi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ravi. So, uh, contact in a in a most appropriate way. For, I don't know. Choose how you three want to communicate. Keep me in the loop. Maybe I, I like email best because it kind of uh, allows to to reply to all and keep all people in the loop. And I mean, uh, if you start an email thread and maybe also kind of uh, discuss it on 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 a website and just you know move forward, I think that would be great because the negative side of Facebook is that a lot of people have, you know, Facebook requires you having a real name and many people would be afraid to associate their real name with the aliens, especially if they have mainstream jobs, which are sensitive. Oh, I've been banned three times. Thank <laughs> I've been banned three times already. You've been banned <laughs> for, for having wrong because names you, and. Yeah. You didn't use the real name. No, no. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, the but on the other hand, a lot of people have the jobs which are not sensitive. Let's say, if you're electrician, nobody really cares if you communicate with aliens uh, on Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, there and there are people you know there is whole cultures which are not sensitive. Like I think the Spanish culture is way more open to that. So, so um, for for some people it's just normal. It's there it, and some people just make uh, their living of that, like gym and other light workers who just went all the way. They are uh, on the other side and they uh, and they live openly on Facebook and they talk about aliens on Facebook. So it's a uh, it's changing. Yes, I'm very na uh, very open about uh, aliens. Whenever I'm talking about people to people now, my friends have gotten used to it now. Started from October. Yep, uh, my friends are used to it now. Uh, they're very protective of me. Don't, they think that aliens are da dangerous, some of them, but they they're very open to talking about it. And um, my one friend was, I told him about the radio show. Oh. 
be very careful. They you know exploit you on the radio. And I'm going. I don't think that an uh, an enlightenment network will do that. But I don't. I know they won't. So. Oh, we already we already exposed. We have yeah. Uh, yeah. hundreds, thousands of views. Uh, yes. so. I mean, it's it's building immunity. You show your face initially, yes. you get hurt, but then you kind of your spirit guides, your angels, but kind of give, build a protection around you. But some people don't. One understand. One question I would like to ask in the future is uh, um, to one of the channelers is actually what is the purpose of Facebook, and is it really being designed for the AI they are trying to create? What's AI? That's one question I'd love to ask next time, maybe in a private. Oh, it's a mixed thing. Facebook has a lot of negativity. They do things which are obviously negative. Uh, they kind of don't respect the. Uh, M many things they force on people, people wouldn't welcome. But yeah. uh, at the point, they are a powerful uh, social place where, especially people at work, like the ones which work on the computers, programmers, they are online all the time. And it is so healing when you work on a computer to get someone knocking nearby in a different window, just switch the window, and there is peace there. Right. I, I I was in that situation for many years, and it is one of the healing, most healing things in these days. If you work on a computer, yeah. well, and but also it, I I see Facebook as the beginning of our communal society. We're there in spirit and cyberspace and connecting in some way. So it will become a different connection eventually. But yeah. I, I was actually told cyberspace is going to be a very pivotal yes. ascension catalyst. <laughs> and and the uh, in my in my channeling session, this, my spirit guide said, you know, you are gonna this is you're tech savvy and you're gonna be you're gonna help out with this in the cyberspace being a, a critical part of ascension because people are gonna understand basically this, this whenever, whether you look at all the scientific background behind Moore's law, yeah. the speed at which we're advancing with it, it's already gonna be in ten years, up to the day, up to the speed of close to a human brain, and it's the same. It's the closest analogy we can have to a collective consciousness before an actual fourth density shift. And so, I think the ETs understand that and see how that can be utilized in such an extremely positive way. But it is just a channel, and it can also be utilized in a negative way, which has, you know, been the case for a long time. But now, there's so many great people and light workers who the truth is coming out, and there's not as much misinformation and People are, you know, realizing what's resonating, but cyberspace is going to be very, very huge. Um, I've been yeah. told. The messages from yeah. Oh, go ahead. Um, watch Caprica if you can. That was very enlightening about that transition of uh, well, you know, you see the Google glasses now, don't you, and all that. Uh -huh. And it's almost like mm -hmm. the next step up. And they banned that. They banned it in the end. They stopped it at a certain point because I think it was getting a little bit too too close to the technology the military have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Simulations, the, th the virtual reality, the holodeck, everything that Gene Roddenberry was channeled. Um, oh, yeah. Gene Roddenberry had a, some great channel. He had to be being uh, taught by aliens because a lot of things that he's... Uh, many things, I should not say everything, but a lot of things that he channeled were very right on. So... He well, channeled you know, himself, Dara or he had Dara used other channels. He worked for Star Trek as well, which is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. So the guy that channels Bashar was actually one of the post-production people for Star Trek. Yes, Daryl Aiken. Yes. That's interesting. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. The show has a lot of really good metaphors or analogies. Yes, it was yeah. wonderful. For that yes. <laughs> And, and also, he's going to be releasing his film this year, which okay. is going to be showing pictures of Bashar, and he's got the same CGI team that has worked on The Life of Pi. Oh, wow. Working on his film, and he's going to be talking about channeling, and he's going to show you what he sees in CGI when he goes off into the channeling state and mm. when Bashar comes through. So that, for me, oh, is going to be so exciting. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that's great. I wouldn't even know how to go about doing that. Yeah, that's wild. That's really <laughs> wild. So, anyway, um, Gabriel, were you trying to say something? I saw your picture flash on there a couple times. 
Yeah, uh, but uh, uh, James, you you do you want to be a big stream or still ha be able to talk to everybody that you connect to? Because okay, my uh, that Anka can't really have a group he can talk with, but the most of people he can't. Right, I, I like the personal sessions. I like to talk to people one on one, and I know the aliens like that too. They can give them better information because they're more directly connected to that individual. In a group setting, they it's harder for. I can tell they strain a little bit more to get the information. Uh, it's but in a one to one situation, they're they flow a lot better. Yeah. We want every one of you to become channeler. Yes. I think that the, that's part of their purpose is to help you become a channeler. But first they got to get you in the right frame of mindset, the right uh, balance, the right grounding and everything, and then they're going to open you up. So. We already have several channelers in our group. Like Zachariah is around. He wants another session. And there are a few other people who can channel. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it's... I tried to back today, but I don't know where he was. I, I tried to channel, but I got the orb instead inside of me. <laughs> 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 Maybe that's the start. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Maybe that's, a... that's yeah, probably... You have to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so uh, how it will develop? Obviously, you know, the ratio between the channelers and people who want to speak to higher spheres might remain the same right now. I mean, we just developed new format. This is, I mean, this format is unique. That's the only, I mean, that's the first one. Nobody is doing that where anybody from the world can come and yeah. speak to, a, to, to people up there. So uh, let's do more of that. And if you develop channeling abilities, let's, uh, let's uh, create a network of things like that and we'll have your webinar and uh, you will channel to others. And at some point, hopefully, few aliens will talk to each other. Right now, we have, uh, say, Sabrina speaking uh, Liran to Takur. That was wonderful. Uh huh. <laughs> and uh, and then maybe uh, you know Takur would speak to Lakesh. Lakesh would speak to someone else, and uh, and we'll have a group um, conversation like I that. I don't think anyone else is doing that either. Talking. Alien languages online. Oh no, no! I mean, we, we just got we just got that uh, video where uh, the girl apparently sp she speaks. I think she speaks Ar Ar Arcturian. It's it's posted on our and website. It's exactly like what Sabrina was talking. It's very similar, it's and very similar. she says me a couple of several yeah. times, and you know that's very that's yes. I uh, we love you basically. Yes, I I had. Uh, <laughs> she's incredibly oh. happy when she's doing this. It's like the most joyous interpretation that I've ever seen. It's like beautiful. All right, yeah. let's uh, wrap up with the uh, meditation. People suggested that we do meditation for the Earth. Um, yes. How do you call it? Uh, Earth. Uh, well-being. Sta well-being. Earth. Health of the planet. Yeah, health of the. Health of the Earth. Health geological of the health of the planet. I would say. Yes, it's since uh, we've been hit by energy from the center of the galaxy on 20, 12, 21, 12. Uh, it has knocked the Earth for a little bit of a loop. It will balance out. However, it's causing a lot of havoc right now, more than they expected. So, um, so I will take... Let's let us meditate on the Earth. It is very important now. Do your official meditation. Okay. Our official uh, blessing. Do your official yeah. blessing. I'll, I'll do official but, blessing. But, but can't we invite a being that can do a group meditation together that will help us, guide us through that? No, we invite sure. it for next time. Right now, yeah. Jim's channeling um, muscle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from another time, yes. it would be fun. Yes. Is that you standing up, <laughs> Gabriel? Well, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, last month there was a uh, Earth Meditation Day. I posted it up on the website. Um, yes. Yeah, there are some people who get in touch with them. They have synchronized meditation around the globe. But right now, let's do that. Our um, okay. um, blessing. Do the blessing.
first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you for all those that help with getting the spiritual information to the world. We thank you and love you and uh, honor you very much. Thank you, God. The higher spirits and powers and angels and aliens that are working in connection with each other to, to help us. We just really, really thank you. And we just ask that uh, you continue to help us. We thank you, Mother Earth, for all that you do for us. Without you, we wouldn't be here. You are our life, our grounding, our energy from the from below. And um, we just thank you for going through all these things for us. And we know that you're having a hard time right now. And that's part of your what you know to be your sacrifice for us. And we love you, and we give you energy, and we thank you for all that you've done for us. And we thank all the things in between. Um, we just know that we're all working together for unity, a continuation of great energy, uplifting vibrations. We don't understand completely why we have to go all through all these things, but someday we will know. And we just want to say, give us what we need, understand us as well as you can, and let us grow as quickly as possible or as quickly as you want us to into the beings that we are, are to be. I know that we have our perfect selves with us right now. They're, they're in there. Just bring them out. Bring them out to the edge. Bring that spirit up and out. So thank you very much. And I want to thank all the people here that that are helping with the the vibration of the earth being raised. I just these are wonderful, good people. And we just I just want to thank them and thank their spirits for all the things that they are doing as well. And just Thank you very much. All I can do is thank and praise right now. It's it's such a good feeling to know that we are being helped and looked after. Amen. Amen. I will play for a minute. Let's meditate for a minute, and I will do the music. What was that? Somebody said something right there. I said namaste. 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 Can we give that love to the earth? Love to the earth, for sure. And I, I bid you all farewell. Thanks for coming. And uh, Thank, you, Jim. Thank you, Max. Namaste, everybody. I, I, I truly mean that. Muha. Muha. Namaste. <laughs> Thank you. Namaste to everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Have a great Have weekend. A Have, a weekend. Have a great day. Thanks for everything, guys. Oh, you're <laughs> so well. Bye, Kelly. Goodbye. Bye bye. Here, eat this last. Goodbye. Where do I disk